Shalom, Havarim. Last time, we looked at the major components of the Hebrew language as we find it in the Bible. Now it's time to start understanding each component in depth. We'll start with the consonants. Here's Deuteronomy 4.34, one of two verses in the Hebrew Bible that has all the consonants in it. The first appearance of each consonant is highlighted here. Let's take out the vowel signs, accent marks, and other verse markings to get down to the consonants themselves. When all those other elements are removed, the text is still readable to an experienced Hebrew student or to a native speaker. Hebrew has 22 or 23 consonants, depending on how a certain set of letters is understood. Let's number them to get a sense of where we'll go from here. Understandably, the first appearance of each consonant in the verse tends to crowd to the beginning of the verse. Let's look at each consonant in its alphabetic order, though. Each instance of the consonant will be in bold face plus underlined. We'll identify the look of each letter as well as the sound the consonant makes. Aleph is the first consonant in the verse and also the first in the Hebrew alphabet. While that might make us think it is similar to the letter A that starts the English alphabet, that actually isn't the case. Aleph is a consonant, not a vowel. However, it has no sound. It is a silent letter. This means that all you pronounce with Aleph is the vowel mark associated with it. Sometimes, especially when it ends a syllable, Aleph will have no vowel and so will be absolutely silent. This is called quiescence. Bet is the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It can have two sounds, a hard B as in boy or V as in victor. Normally, when the bet is preceded by a vowel sound, it will sound like a V. If it isn't preceded by a vowel, it will have the harder B sound. We will distinguish between the two sounds with a dot in the middle of the consonant called a dogish. When bet has the dogish, it is B. When there is no dogish, it is V. Gimel is the third letter. It produces a G sound as in good when it has the dogish. When there is no dogish, it may have a G sound as in ghost. However, in practice, it is pronounced the same way as with the dogish. Dalet is the fourth letter. It produces a D sound as in dog when it has the dogish. When there is no dogish, it may have a DH sound as the th in this. However, in practice, it is pronounced the same way as with the dogish. Hey is the fifth letter. It produces an H sound as in hey. If it is on the end of a word, it often produces an ah sound. When it does this, it is called a vowel carrier. Vav is the sixth letter. It produces a V sound as in Victor. Originally, it most likely had a W sound, although the pronunciation isn't used in biblical studies or modern Hebrew. Like hey, it can also function as a vowel carrier with the sounds of either O or U, depending on what vowel mark it carries. When it starts a word, it usually is the conjunction meaning and. Zion is the seventh letter. It produces a Z sound, as in zero. Chet is the eighth letter. It produces a sound reminiscent of the ch at the end of Bach. The sound is produced in the back of the throat. Tet is the ninth letter. It produces a soft T sound similar to the th in that. It is produced by sticking the tongue in between the teeth. Tet is the rarest letter in the Hebrew Bible. Yod is the tenth letter. It produces a Y sound, as in yes. It is, like hey and vav, a vowel carrier that can make the sounds E as in machine or A as in they, depending on the vowel mark associated with it. Kof is the eleventh letter. It produces a hard K sound, as in king, when it has the dogish. When there is no dogish, it produces a slight sound, once again, as in Bach although a little softer than chet. This is the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet to have a final form. The letter will look different when it is the last letter in a word, as we can see in the final letter of this verse. Lamed is the twelfth letter. It produces an L sound, as in layer. Mem is the thirteenth letter. It produces an M sound, as in mom. It also has a final form. Nun is the fourteenth letter. 
it produces an N sound as in noon. It also has a final form. Samek is the 15th letter. It produces an S sound as in silo. It is one of three S sounds in the Hebrew language. Ayin is the 16th letter. It produces a glottal stop, like the sound made between the two T's in bottle. However, it is often left unpronounced, like Aleph. Pe is the 17th letter. It produces a hard P sound like pony when there is a doggish present. It produces an F or PH sound as in Philly when the doggish is absent. Pe also has a final form. Sade is the 18th letter. It produces a TS sound as in sheets. It has a final form. Kof is the 19th letter. It produces a Q sound as in got. There is no U sound that must follow it though, as we have in English. Resh is the 20th letter. It produces an R sound as in rush. The 21st letter is sometimes thought of as two letters, shin and sin, or sometimes pronounced seen. Shin has a dot on the right side of the top of the letter, producing an SH sound as in shed. Sin has a dot on the left side, producing an S sound as in sign. The best way to remember the difference? Well, sin is never right. Tav is the 22nd and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In contrast to tet, it produces a hard T sound as in tank when it has the doggish. When it doesn't, it can take a softer TH sound as in thought. However, in practice, Tav sounds like a hard T with or without the doggish. Now we've seen all the consonants of the Hebrew alphabet in this passage. Let's add back the vowels, the pronunciation helps, the accents, and the verse markers. And now let's see the text as it would be printed in a Hebrew Bible. O Hani Sa Elohim Lavo Lakahat Lo Goy Mikerev Goy Bimasot Beotot Uv Moftim Uv Milchama Uv Yad Hazaka Uv Izroa Nituya Uv Morayim Gedolim. Kikol asher asa la kem adonai elohekem bimitzrayim le eneka. Or did a god ever try to take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation, by trials, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Deuteronomy 4, 34. And that's a look at all the Hebrew consonants.